Texas versus Florida. Where to live if you have been considering moving to one of these states. We will be breaking down both states into five different categories. Housing market, entertainment and recreation, weather conditions, safety, and make sure to stick around to the end where we will talk about the fifth and possibly the most important reason. Now, before we get started on all the categories and information, I'm curious. With all the knowledge that you currently have on each state, which one would you choose if you had to move there? Drop it in the comments, let us know, and without further ado, let's get started. According to Redfin.com, the median Texas home price was $342,000 in 2023, and that is a 1% decrease year over year from 2022. Now, on the other hand, in the state of Florida, we have a median home price of $404,000 with a 3% year over year appreciation. And according to Rocket Mortgage, the average monthly payment in Texas is $2,195 and with a median household income of $7,806. And what we're seeing in Florida is we're gonna have a average monthly payment of $2,275 per month with a median household income at right under $7,500 a month. So it's very clear in the past few years, both of these states have been getting a ton of attention and a lot of people are moving here. Now, with that being said, we also have three cities in each state with the fastest growing sales price. The first city in Texas is going to be Friendswood, the second one Huntsville, and the third one is Texarkana. Now, in the peninsula, the three cities are going to be Sarasota, Riviera Beach, and lastly, Winter Park, which is a city just outside of Orlando. Additionally, there is one big reason why a lot of people have been moving to these states. Elon Musk just moved to Texas, Jeff Bezos just moved to Florida, and it seems to be because of the tax benefits each state has to offer. Both of these states have no state income tax, so what that means is for the working class, you don't have to pay a state income tax. For retirees, you don't have to pay any tax on your retirement benefits. And lastly, for any investors, you don't have to pay the state for any of your investments that you make. Texas is a state where it's gonna be a little bit more affordable. You're gonna have a slightly lower monthly payment with a higher household income. But on the other hand, Florida is where you might see a little bit more appreciation and demand for properties. In both states, you will find similar entertainment and recreation activities, including national parks, sporting events, beaches, theme parks, nightlife, and arts and culture. Dallas is gonna be the most major city in Northern Texas. And first and foremost, you're gonna have a lot of different sporting events that you can visit to. Dallas is also known for a lot of their arts and cultures. And of course in Dallas, the food, the beverage, the live music, some of the best you'll find in the entire country. Dallas is also home to Six Flags Amusement Park. This is somewhere where you can go with the family, especially if you're looking for a thrill and get your adrenaline pumping. Austin, Texas is the live music capital of the world. Joe Rogan just moved there and opened up a comedy club. So they are growing exponentially in the comedy scene and also in the martial arts scene. San Antonio, Texas is a very modern, vibrant city. Also, San Antonio is a great place for the family. You're gonna have SeaWorld, Six Flags, Wildlife Ranch, and Legoland. Let's hop over to Florida. We're gonna go ahead and get started with the home of Mickey Mouse. Orlando, Florida is the third biggest metropolitan city in the entire state, and it's gonna be home to Universal, SeaWorld, all the parks and attractions you can imagine. Orlando is also conveniently located only 45 minutes away from Cocoa Beach and one hour away from Daytona Beach. The next area you'd want to take a look at is Ocala, Florida. This is for the folks that are looking for a more quiet style of life. Ocala is known as the horse capital of the world and they have one of only two world equestrian centers in the entire world. They have a population of less than 400,000 people. It is one of the newer metropolitan cities in the state of Florida. The next city is going to be Tampa, Florida. Tampa and Orlando have a lot of similarities in size and culture. One of the biggest things with Tampa is you're going to be a lot closer to the West Coast, meaning you're going to have the Gulf of Mexico water instead of the Atlantic. But a little more beneficial if you're looking to go surfing. And Tampa is also very rich with different events such as Gasparilla and different music festivals. 
Texas on the west coast is gonna have a more desert type of climate. On the east coast, you're gonna have more subtropical. You're also gonna have a lot of different microclimates because of how big the state is. The average temperatures in Texas are gonna range anywhere from 69 to 92 degrees during the summer. Rainy seasons are typically gonna be between March and May and September through October. On the other hand, we're gonna have the winters in Texas. The lows can range anywhere from 31 to 61 degrees, depending on what part of the state you're in. In North Texas, you're definitely gonna have a colder climate. In the South, you're definitely gonna have that more subtropical warm winters. Just to be prepared, the coldest month in Texas is always gonna be February. The middle and north of Florida is gonna be a much more subtropical climate and South Florida is gonna have almost a rainforest type climate. And what you can really expect during the summers is the average temperature from 73 to 95 degrees. Winters in Florida are typically very cool and mild. Average temperatures from 62 to 77 degrees. What would it look like moving to this state? What are the violent crime rates? What are the property crime rates? And what are some of the natural disasters that we can expect? In Texas, one of the biggest natural disasters that are gonna happen is primarily flooding. During the rainy seasons, you're gonna have very short but intense rain. So that can span anywhere from one to two days at the maximum, but a lot of times the infrastructure isn't built for a lot of rain. Hurricanes are gonna be the biggest worry for somebody moving to Florida. Now talking about the crime rate. Just to give you a perspective, the national average of property crime rates per 1,000 people is 19.3. The Texas crime rate is 21.9 property crimes per 1,000 people. Violent crimes is 4.6 per 1,000 people. The national average is four. Now on the other side in Florida, you're going to have 17.7 property crimes per 1,000 people, and then 3.8 violent crimes per 1,000 people. And the last category is going to be your career options. In both Florida and in Texas, there is a very large amount of different colleges and universities to choose from. In Texas, the average in-state tuition is going to be $6,624. If you're coming from out of state, you can expect your tuition to be at around $16,958. If you're getting out of college, you just finished your 40-year degree, your average salary is going to be around $54,000. On the other side, Florida is gonna have a lot of well-known universities. The average in-state tuition, according to collegetuitioncompare.com, is $3,796 for in-state. Out of state, you can expect around $13,692. And just a quick heads up, these averages were for the state colleges, not the private universities. If you are graduating from one of these state colleges, the average salary after graduation is gonna be right over $40,000 for in the state of Florida. I'm curious now, after getting all of this information, which state would you move to now, knowing what you know? Also, I wanna to mention to everybody, this was a lot of straightforward information and there is so many things in detail you can learn about each and every state. So if there is someone who lives in Texas or in Florida, please mention a few things and drop it in the comments for everybody. What are some cool things about the place you live and some extra cool details you could share with all of us. And if you do like this content, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell for some more future videos. But for now, my friends, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.